Admiral Gary T. Bloor retired in 2019 after a distinguished career in the United States Coast Guard. A graduate of the Coast Guard Academy, Admiral Bloor has served aboard ship and is a designated Coast Guard aviator, qualified to fly helicopters and the Guardian Fan Jet. After a tour in Operation Desert Storm, he served as the Special Assistant to the President with the title Homeland Security Council Senior Director for Border and Transportation Security. In the two years prior to his retirement, Admiral Bloor was the Chief Acquisition Officer for the Coast Guard. In this capacity, he regularly evaluated the mission and suitability of hydrofoils in the service of the Coast Guard. Earlier this fall, Admiral Bloor graciously accepted my invitation to express his non-official views about hydrofoils being used in the Coast Guard and offered to write a script provided that I narrated his words. I'm Ray Valinga, President of the International Hydrofoil Society, and here are the Admiral's personal opinions. Admiral Bloor writes, as a former Chief of Acquisitions for the U.S. Coast Guard, 2006 to 2009, I had the privilege of contracting for many capital assets, including patrol boats. Like most advances in technology, the modern patrol boat capabilities that were desired often lagged behind the maturity of the technology then available. This is not at all unusual in acquisition. Military strategic thinkers planned for aircraft bombing sorties long before aircraft could carry more than a few extra pounds. Early submarines lacked the ability to go very fast submerged, compromising their ability to attack surface vessels. The original maritime distress beacons were only good for short ranges, but now send a signal globally. My point here is that the dream, if you will, of capability to perform a particular maritime mission often precedes advances in technology and indeed motivates those same technological advances. In the application of patrol boats to littoral combat, what might I desire as a military strategist? High speed, both as a defensive measure and as an element of surprise. The ability to carry landing parties and provide shoreside kinetic support and carry sufficient armament for seaborne attack and defense. If that is the mission, then hydrofoils are the dream. Hydrofoil patrol craft are not a new concept. Prototypes were operational in the 1950s, but they had limitations. Perhaps surprisingly, speed was not one of them. Early prototypes quickly demonstrated that hydrofoils could outrun anything currently operating on the water, but they can consume large amounts of fuel. Stresses around the foils were often extreme and cracks could develop, and carrying much armament complicated the fuel slash foil stress issues because of the added weight. But we are no longer living in the 1950s, and many of these challenges could be overcome in a new, modern hydrofoil patrol craft. Number one, we understand stealth, that is, low radar signatures, much better than we ever have, making high-speed surprise attack more likely. Number two, modern use of aluminum and especially composite construction reduces weight and adds strength. Number three, High-speed diesel engines develop the necessary shaft horsepower while being much more fuel efficient. Number four, sophisticated onboard combat systems can target both maritime and shore targets with remarkable precision, even when maneuvering at high speeds. Number five, foils can be constructed to be adjusted or lifted to allow low-speed shallow water operations. These capabilities are still needed in a modern Navy and Coast Guard. Is this the decade that hydrofoils will achieve that dream? That is the question.